Hello guys, this is Cesar Creates and welcome back to my channel! First of all, I would like to wish everyone a happy Conservation Pack release day! So let's celebrate today together by building a habitat for a new animal added with this new Conservation Pack, the Przewalski Horse! I was able to build for this animal a bit earlier because Frontier gave me an early access again to this new DLC so thank you Frontier if uh, some of you are watching this video I am beyond grateful this is my second early access but the first one to the DLC with a new scenery pieces so that was very exciting to me to play with those new pieces a bit earlier to see what I will be able to create out of them and and let me just tell you that I love all the new pieces added to the game and I am so excited by them, but more on that later in the video. So if you guys haven't seen the notifications or my post on my social media, this is basically the third video that I am uploading today. Before I already uploaded two more videos, the overview of the free update 1.10 and the overview of all the animals and all all the building pieces and all the foliage added with the new DLC, the conservation pack. So if you haven't seen those two videos, I will put the link down in the description and on the screen, one by one, they should pop up on the screen. So definitely check them out if you like to see what is added to the game today. By the way, a friendly reminder that you can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter and join my Discord. Discord server, all the links are down in the description. So if you don't want to miss any of my future uploads, any of my future posts, uh, you are welcome to join. So what we are going to build today is a very detailed and realistic habitat for the Przewalski's horse. In my overview of all the animals added with this new pack, I already told you guys what are my favorites, but maybe I will repeat that. So uh, the animals that I love the most from this new pack are definitely the horses, the Przewalski's horse, and also El Amor Leopard. I don't know what it is about it. I am not typically personally a fan of cats, of big cats. I don't know why this is just my thing, but the Amor Leopard is so, so beautiful. Beautiful uh, that I fell in love with it. I love its spots, the pattern. So yeah, one of my favorite animals right now in the game, and also the horses. I think that I love them so much because I used to ride on horses when I was younger. So seeing them really brings back a lot of memories. So I wanted to build for them first, and of course I wanted to build something cool for them. I sort of struggle with an inspiration for this habitat at first but I didn't have too much time uh, recording free videos over a weekend is a lot of work let me just tell you uh, so uh, I just you know went for it I started to build without basically any uh, inspiration any photos of course I've seen some habitats of or for them online but nothing really inspired me so I just went for it and I came up with something like this in this video I think that will build the most detailed like stable or shelter ever we don't have any uh, like uh, any shelter or building like with so much details like so thought out uh, the stable was actually inspired by a photo that I found on the internet uh, but only the inside, the outside was my creation, it wasn't inspired by anything. I just wanted to showcase as much new pieces, building pieces as I was able to. But what I love the most about this stable is obviously the interior, the stalls, uh, all that we I did inside. Of course I added tons of those backstage props that we have now in the game and that are so good and they make such a big difference you guys will be able to see it uh, like shortly 
But yeah, this stable was definitely inspired by the photo that I found, but also by my memories from the horse riding days when I was a child. Also, I did some uh, pretty like fun holding pens that I really like. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys will like this uh, building because it was so, so much work. I actually was building it and finishing it the day before I'm uploading this video. So I was doing it yesterday, like very very fast just to be on time. I am recording this voice over like uh, quite late in the evening, just a day before the new pack is released. So I'm sure that I will be sleepy <laughs> tomorrow, but, but I really wanted to make sure that this video will be out on the day of the release. So you guys have some inspiration for your Przewalski's horse habitats when you will add them to your zoos. Okay, so let me just quickly explain what I did here, what I did while I was talking. Uh, so we created the whole shape of the habitat. The viewing platform for the guests will be a bit raised, so they will get very nice view into inside of this habitat. We are doing it quite often when the uh, whole habitat is slightly like sloped down and it gives the guests really beautiful views of everything that is going on in the habitat. Uh, the guests are slightly like a Above the animals and uh, I think it looks so so cool uh, because thanks to that there is no fence like in between the guests and the animal and I think it is so much like more natural not to look for at those animals through any you know metal bars or anything so I really like it I am using it all the time we also created a very like a generic city zoo metal fence in this habitat this was inspired by my visit again to Berlin's zoo this zoo gave me so much inspiration for those little things like fences and so on but i really love the style of those fences for example it looks really like city zoo it is very plain very like metal but on the other hand it is green so it really like blends well together with the foliage around it and then we created something that was my idea that, you know, I just came up with while building this habitat, uh, sort of like a ranch uh, fence for the holding pens of the horses. This is something that I remember from my horse riding years, from my visits on the countryside. This is like this typical fence. And what inspired me to build that are those new gutter pieces. I mean, you have the new, like bigger gutters in this new uh, DLC and they have a lot of those you know holders or and uh, tiny pieces that are used to simply attach those gutters to your builds and I think that those are so versatile you can use them in so many ways I love mo small pieces in that game because uh, really I use them in different ways like this one so here I am using this metal piece as something that holds uh, this beam to this pole of the fence if it makes any sense and also and also what I remember is that those fences uh, they uh, often don't have like any like typical gates you enter this pen by simply moving those locks some of them are you can just lift them and you know put them on the ground so this is what I try to do it in here you'll see that in the cinematics and also you'll see me you know moving those two beams to sort of uh, make them look like they were you know opened moved uh, so it looks really really cool uh, this is very typical for ranches for farms and stuff like that and I really really love that uh, those holding pens that we'll have in here those are I think my favorite holding pens in the entire zoo uh, so I hope you guys will like them as as well. Horses are of course herbivores and they eat plants. They like different plants. They eat a lot of plants because they are huge animals. So uh, I knew that if I wanted to have a bit of greenery in this habitat, I had to protect it with some sort of uh, guards and stuff like that. We use the mesh steel fence for that. I really love using it uh, recently. It is so fast but it looks so like effective uh, when you paint it into 
into green colors. Uh, so I really, really like that. This is also inspired by Berlin Zoo, like totally. And when it comes to the fences, actually with this new update, free update 1.10, uh, now you can make all the fences in the game curved. You couldn't do that before. Only some of the fences could be curved. Uh, of course, you can you could cheat that a bit. You could build a curved fence from, for example, a concrete curved fence and then, you know, click on it and change it to some sort of different fence that you wanted to be curved and it stayed uh, curved, basically. Uh, but now you can just make all the fences curved. And I love it because this steel fence, you actually see it a lot in Zeus. Uh, in Not always straight, sometimes it is curved or, you know, in a circle or something. Also, this wooden lock uh, fence, it could totally also be curved, so why not have this option? And I am super, super happy that it was added. Then I created this singular tree guard for one tree using those beams added in the Africa pack. Uh, I already did that like some time ago in different habitats, but I just thought that there are so many people who joined recently uh, that I will do it again just to show you guys how I do it in case some of you uh, didn't see my previous videos. Then I will add tons of plants to this habitat, of course. Uh, I will add them, of course, inside of those tree guards, those plant guards. Uh, but also I will add a lot of small rocks and I will like put the plants in the in between the rocks, rocks in the crevices and stuff like that. I knew that I couldn't go too crazy because, you know, obviously the horses in real life would eat those plants, but it was so hard for me not to go crazy because I love all the new plants added to this game with this new pack and also free update because there are some added that you'll get even if you won't buy this new update. They are all so, so good. I feel like with every, you know, update, with every pack, the plants and the animals are getting better and better. Like, the plants are looking so much more realistic right now. There are some plants in this new DLC and the update that I adore, I love so much, and I already know that I will be using them in all my habitats that I will add to my regular palette of plants that I always use. For example, the dry drin grass. It is just amazing. I mean, this is something that I can see uh, myself adding uh, also to the ungulate uh, habitats because those animals, I think, don't like eating dry grass. When it's dead, it, they are not eating it. So <laughs> uh, I can justify adding a bit more grass to those habitats right, right now. Then we have this salt something plant. I really don't remember the name, but it looks so amazing. I mean, the fact that we have the uh, normal green version and the uh, dry version and blending them together looks so, so good. So uh, again, another plant that I'll be using so, so much. But the plant that I love the most from this new DLC, the plant that I know that is probably in my top three of the plants right now uh, is this Yorkshire folk grass I think it is called this is one of those many plants that were added with this new DLC to create those meadows I mean you have different kinds of flowers that you can blend together uh, and uh, they create those beautiful meadows in a matter of seconds really I showcased it also in my uh, DLC overview uh, I I created this meadow that took me like I don't know several minutes and it's huge and it looks beautiful but one of those plants is this fog grass and it is so beautiful and it blends so well together with other plants with the uh, drain grass with those leaves from the euro pack so this is the plant that you can expect to see in all of my future episodes because I just love it so much I know that in one of my uh, previous episodes, I told you guys that I won't be able to uh, record as much from this new DLC because I am going for uh, holidays. But unfortunately, one of my friends that uh, I was supposed to go with had some personal issues and we all decided not to go. So we were able to postpone this uh, holiday to August and because of that, I was able to record quite a lot over this weekend and I will be able to build 
for those new animals uh, in the future days. Uh, my plan basically when it comes to the Elm Hill City Zoo is to add for of course the Przewalski's horse right now and then we will add, I still don't know in what order, I have, you have to think about it, but we will add the Oryx to the zoo and also the Amur Leopard to the Wild Cat House. Uh, when it comes to the Siamang, uh, I will add it when I will build a, a primate section for the zoo, which I have planned. But you guys will have to be a bit more uh, patient with that because it's one of those plans for a far, far future. Uh, and the axolotl I will add to the reptile and amphibian house that I am planning to build sooner actually, uh, probably after we'll finish the wildcat house, I will move on to building the reptile house, so I cannot wait for that. What I like about this DLC is that it's basically perfect for this zoo, for the Elm Hugh City Zoo, because those animals uh, don't like uh, belong to the same, I don't know, biomes, the same uh, families and stuff like that. So I am not adding them in the same like section in the same house as we did before a lot. Uh, so uh, thanks to that, I am able to squeeze those habitats somewhere that I had free spaces. Uh, so I am able to fill those empty places like I am doing it right now with the Przewalski's horse. We are adding it opposite to the doll sheep and the ibex and next to the timber wolves. I think that this is a really nice spot for this animal we are building here uh, more for those you know temperate taiga animals and this horse definitely suits this kind of environment so I am very happy with the positioning of this habitat. I know that I talked a lot about being given an early access by Frontier in my uh, Red Crown Crane habitat when I first was added the early access and I shared with you guys what an amazing feeling it was but still it is an amazing feeling so I just wanted to share with you guys that I am just so happy and I am a bit proud of myself uh, for being given it again. This is to me such an amazing feeling to be given it by Frontier because this simply means that they enjoy my work, that they see me, uh, that they see that people watch my videos. Of so this is mainly thanks to you guys and I would like to thank you because you make me so happy because of it. To be given this early access and to be able to enjoy this game a bit earlier than everyone else. It is so unbelievable for me. I remember always like being a bit jealous of people who got the early access even before I started YouTube that they could see those new pieces, that they could see uh, uh, the new animals before everyone else. And I always thought that they are so lucky and now I am one of those persons so this is just amazing to me. And to be given an early access to such an amazing DLC because I love this DLC so much. The new animals are amazing, I love how they are made, I love the animals that were selected for this, the Przewalski horse, the Amur leopard, the Oryx, uh, also the Siamang are just just beautiful, there are new behaviors like branchiation for the Siamangs, so such an amazing DLC. But what I love most about it are obviously the building pieces. I am a creative person, creative player, so I am always super happy when the new pieces are added and this time they are just amazing. Like those slat wooden pieces, their texture, the wooden texture is so beautiful that I know that I will be using it a lot in my future builds because uh, those are really like outstanding to me. And of course the backstage stuff, the the backstage props, the backstage wheelbarrows, forks, shovels and stuff like that. I waited for those for such a long time and they make me so so happy. You guys will see me playing with those uh, soon in the video. Uh, those are beautiful, they are all recolorable, they are all yeah, super super useful. I will be using them in all my backstage areas and I have this urge to add them in all the existing habitats. I don't think that I will do it because it will be a lot of work but maybe it will be actually wise when it comes to the PC count because I added a lot of uh, things that were uh, blueprints and they were made for from you know thousands of small pieces so maybe this is wise maybe I will like take some time and do it but we will see. 
So if you are not sure if you should buy the new DLC, I would say that it is totally worth it. I think that the amazing building pieces, like the amazing new plants that are super, super useful in all the habitats, I think you can use them for all the animals. And also a really, really cool animals are totally worth investing in the new DLC. So if I were you, I would go and buy it right away. I feel like with this new DLC, you, could, you can really see how much work did the devs put in it, uh, how thought out it is, how many pieces that we wanted are there. So it makes me so happy and it makes me so happy for the future of Planet Zoo because if they are still adding so such a wonderful things, uh, we can only expect even better ones in the future. So it makes me like very, very happy. Also, the general style, the style of architecture, the style of the new pieces is so aesthetically pleasing to me. I This is totally my style, like this more modern uh, style. Uh, you actually get a lot of prefabs uh, with this new DLC. You have the prefabs for all the buildings, like shops, like for example, keeper huts and so on. And they are so beautifully made. And you can really see uh, how uh, you can use the new pieces thanks to that. So they are always so, so useful. I just like to, you know, put them in my zoo and just stare at them, <laughs> just look at them uh, to see how the devs, uh, like, uh, uh, are using the pieces that they simply made themselves with the thought of using that in those ways. Of course, creative persons uh, tend to use them in totally different ways. I sometimes also use uh, pieces that are not meant to be used for something to build so something totally crazy, uh, but that's just how Planet Zoo works, I guess. So, as you guys can see, I already started to build a stable. For the outside, I used those those rustic stones from the Euro pack that I really love and I actually didn't use too much so I wanted to finally use it from a proper building and I added uh, those slate uh, wooden pieces from the new DLC from the conservation pack and I love them so much. I already used this style of uh, the facade quite a lot in the zoo, uh, you know, those wooden slightly tilted planks on the walls, but I think it looks so beautiful, like I love how the sun, the lighting is hitting it and it gives like those beautiful shadows, uh, so again, I wanted to use those new pieces for that and I am very happy that I did because I think it looks amazing, especially connected with those rustic walls. I think it like matches so so well together that I am very very happy with how this shelter has turned out and especially that the outside part wasn't inspired by anything this is on my creation like solely my creation something that I had in my head so I am very happy that it looks so good I added here doors that we already created for the ibex and the doll sheep I really like them and I think that they match this building so well and of course I lined the entire building inside with plaster pieces this time they'll be white I don't know uh, this is something that I saw on my inspiration and I actually liked uh, I will add some decals later to make it look a bit dirty of course the animal would make it dirty really fast uh, but thanks to it being so like bright and white it is uh, so much you know uh simply brighter <laughs> inside, uh, so I really like uh, the choice of the color here. I wanted to have a lot of light inside here, so I created uh, one big window, but uh, something again inspired by a photo that I found uh, is uh, roof windows. Uh, I mean, in English, I think you call them uh, skylights, so we'll have two skylights in here. Uh, they uh, like bring so much light inside, so I am very happy that I decided to add them. I won't actually include the footage of building the roof and the ceiling uh, in this video because it was so much work. It took so much time. I was so surprised with how long it took. I thought it would be a very quick and easy build but I was so wrong. And also uh, when I did the ceiling inside, uh, the 
camera moves in a speed build were just crazy so I didn't want to make you guys dizzy so I decided not to include that you will see all of that all of that on the cinematic shots by the end of this video on some cinematic shots actually I think that I won't include the roof I mean I will move it somewhere else just to show you the better view from uh, on the stalls that we are building right now uh, I really love the stalls in this habitat I think that they came out so so good uh, they just look like a horse stable to me uh, so I am very very happy about them this is what makes this stable look so beautiful inside uh, so to showcase them a bit better I think that uh, I will give you guys some cinematic shots without the roof so please don't be surprised when you'll see this building missing something this video is actually quite long, uh, it took me so much time to build this habitat, I was very surprised by it because I thought that it'll be a quick build, like building 4 ungulates in this game uh, for me is usually quicker than building for other animals because I am not adding so much plants and foliage, but here I had to do so many different things that it actually took so much time, I mean uh, first of all we have the open part of the habitat, so, so the part that the guests will actually see then we have this stable with this very detailed interior with those all those stalls with those backstage props uh, then we have the uh, holding pens then we have the fences then we have all the foliage around this habitat then we also have the viewing gallery that you'll be see, you'll see me briefly built at the end of this video uh, so yeah it was actually a lot that's why I am recording this voiceover just before the new pack will be released uh, because it took me so much time to build this habitat. I'm sure that you guys will have a very fun day today uh, if you are watching me and my fellow content creators uh, who are building in Planet Zoo. There will be a lot of content today, I can already tell you. Uh, everyone is preparing their videos, everyone uh, is releasing them today. Uh, so I am quite jealous of you guys because I remember for myself when I still didn't have this channel, I was so waiting for those YouTube videos uh, with the new animals, with the showcases, with the habitats for for those new animals so today you will have a lot of things to watch to enjoy uh, such a fun day i always love the days uh, when the new packs for planet zoo are released uh, there is a lot of joy there's a lot of excitement so uh, i am very very happy and i cannot wait because still it wasn't released when i am recording this voiceover by the way, I am right now building the doors uh, for those uh, stalls, so uh, every of those stalls has this individual entrance for the animal, uh, just like horse stables often do. I haven't done that a lot before, I always do like a main entrance to the shelter and then the stalls are inside, but I really like it, I think it looks really cool and also uh, the fact that every animal has its own entrance, has its own like uh, stall is so so fun. Here unfortunately because of the size of the stalls and the size of the doors, I had to do uh, some of those doors like semi-locked, I mean a bit slow slide it inside because they didn't like couldn't be opened totally uh, because of the shape of the stalls so not all the stalls are usable by the animals because the entrances are too small but still they have I think three of them that they can use and uh, they are going there all the time and it looks so so cool when they are using those when they are inside of the stable just like a regular horse stable, although those horses are a bit special. It is considered to be the last wild living horse. It is actually a subspecies of the Acus ferus and is considered to be domestic horse closest relative. It is also a cousin of zebra and the wild ass. I really like how this animal was made in the game. I think that the fur texture is so beautiful. Like I really like how they did the mane and the tail. Their animations are also beautiful. I love the way they gallop, they run. I love uh, the fact that they can play with the piano. This is very like strange but uh, funny and really nice detail. You can you guys can give them the 
little piano enrichment and they will play it. So definitely try and see it for yourself because it's quite funny. But yeah, they have a really nice set of animations. I love their mating animation. I love the um, animation between the child and the mother. Uh, I also think that there is something new in the game. I'm not sure for 100%, but I think that the child or the little pony is a bit following its mother. Uh, I saw that when I was recording the uh, showcase of the new DLC, but I wasn't quite sure. That's why I I didn't say anything in the showcase, but uh, I think that this is the case that the little pony is actually following its mother. There is also like a beautiful socializing animation. So yeah, really cool animal, really beautiful animal with some uh, very nice uh, color variants. So I am very, very happy with it. As I told you guys, one of my favorites from this new pack. And now starts my favorite part of this video, creating all this backstage stuff for the stable with the new backstage props. I love those pieces so much. Finally, we have them. So as you guys can see, I firstly like did like a palette of them to see what I can use because I still don't re remember what pieces are new. So I wanted to add them all just to showcase them. Uh, and then I will add all those shovels, all those four and stuff like that. I will add the hoses. Uh, I will create my own set of sh like metal shelves and then add uh, the carton boxes, th those new crates. I will add like a food prep preparing station and uh, add some th of those vegetables that are added to the game. So the carrots, the potatoes, the cauliflower and stuff like that. So this is just amazing. It looks so, so good. I will also add like those haystacks and we'll put like a fork in it it looks so beautiful i also love the design of this new wheelbarrow all of those things are just amazing so this part of the video is definitely my favorite uh, and from now on we will for sure add those things to all of the future habitats i just think that something like this brings the whole uh, design of the habitat to another level you'll see that in the cinematic shots how well those things look, uh, how uh, detailed things of uh, that this table is looking. I always had problems with, you know, feeling those uh, like corridors, like the stuff uh, areas in those shelters with different kinds of uh, like uh, pieces. I always added those crates and those carton boxes that we had, but it all looked exactly the same. And from now on, we will be able to do some really cool stuff with those backstage pieces. So yeah, I am very happy with those. Definitely my favorite pieces when it comes to this new DLC. I started giving you guys some information and fun facts about the uh, Przewalski horse, so let's continue with that. Uh, the horses are named after Colonel Nikol Przewalski, which who was Russian, but actually, actually he came from Polish family. Uh, that's why uh, the name, uh, the surname is actually Polish, and that's why I am able to pronounce it because I am also Polish, so I have no problems with saying Przewalski. So uh, the horse was discovered for Europeans in, in 1878, but actually it was known obviously before by Mongolians because it lives on the territories of Mongolia. Unfortunately, the Przewalski horse nearly disappeared into extinction. Uh, the species was listed as extinct from the wild in the 1960s and then all the re reintroduction programs began. Currently around 400 horses are actually living in the wild and because of the efforts the status of this animal is improving. What is actually mind-blowing to me is that all the Przewalski horses alive today are descended from 12 individuals. Captive breeding has increased the species numbers from 12 to today's count approaching to uh, 1,900 individuals. And of course, there are large efforts to minimize inbreeding and maximize genetic diversity. In 2020, actually the first Przewalski horse was cloned. The officials at San Diego Zoo announced the birth of Kurt, the first cloned Przewalski foal. Kurt's cell line uh, actually came from the DNA of the stallion that died in 1998. 
And the scientists hope that the fall will add valuable genetic diversity once it reaches adulthood. Uh, those horses live in small family groups compromised of stallion, 3 to 5 mares and young foals. Males without females uh, form their own bachelor groups. Those horses grow thick warm coats for the winter. Uh, winter coats are essential in the harsh winter desert where temperatures are often freezing. One of the largest reserves where captive Przewalski horses live uh, is in the Chernobyl. In the Ukraine, uh, it is around 1,000 square mile habitat, almost completely free of humans, allowing them to thrive. The study of those horses actually proved that they use abandoned buildings for sleeping, breeding and refuge. So yeah, this is all that I wanted to tell you guys about those wonderful horses. Uh, they are super interesting animals. I am very happy that they were added to the game because I think that they bring this very important story about the matter of conservation, about the importance of con con conservation and how important are those breeding programs, those genetic programs and stuff like that to simply help those more troubled species simply survive. As you guys can see, the shelter, the stable is finished now. As I told you guys, I skipped the roof because it was so much work and the video is already so long that I didn't want to make it even longer. Right now you can see me building the viewing platform for the gas. It is really, really cool. I love how it has turned out. So we have this like planter, elevated planter, and then we have a we'll have a very cool fence in there. Okay guys, so this is basically it when it comes to this video. Definitely stay tuned because you'll see uh, this habitat being finished and the foliage added around it and some work that I did like behind the stable, how cool it looks. I really love how this habitat has turned out. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please consider to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and if you don't want to miss any of my future uploads. Give this video a big thumbs up down below, ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video and of course comment down below what are your thoughts about the new DLC and if you enjoyed today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!